What's going on Reek Builders? I am both uh, anxious and excited because it is time for one of the first big hardcore reefscapes here at the Reef Builder Studio. I'm speaking of course of the Red Sea Peninsula, Red Sea Reefer Peninsula. This tank is five feet long. It's been running about three weeks. My buddy Evan, Hello. hanging up back there, him and I are going to aquascape this tank. And um, if you saw the last video where I showed off the coral flat, um, you'll know that there's a lot of monopores just been waiting and cooking to go in this tank for quite a long time. So um, I am going to hand it off to Evan so I can give you guys a tour of the Red Sea Reefer Peninsula. The Red Sea Reefer Peninsula is a beautiful, beautiful aquarium. Uh, it's high clarity glass, it has rimless, rim, um, beveled edges, just exquisite craftsmanship. And uh, in the way that it's configured here as a peninsula tank, we can just walk all the way around the tank and that's gonna give us so much room and places to put corals and to view corals. Um, but though in order to view corals, we need a really great light. And we've actually partnered with Acro Optics to test out their new second generation light fixture. And these are two fixtures that have basically three strips of LEDs, and these are filled with uh, total internal reflection lenses. Um, so needless to say, this is a great light. We're going to talk about it a little bit more, um, but I want to show you some of the other things that are making this tank happen. Uh, we've got the Gyre FX XF350s. These are like totally oversized for this tank. I have them on alternating gyre running at about 30% strength, and that's about as much as these unglued corals can handle. Let's see, what do we have here underneath? So the sump has turned out kind of minimalistic because, uh, well, we just don't need that much for a reef tank. So we've got the uh, Delu Australia uh, Great White 10 Protein Skimmer, a uh, little beast, you know, in a tank this size, we could easily have room for a bigger skimmer. And we're gonna use this space for something else in the future. Um, we've got another Avast Marine Calc Reactor. It's not running yet, it's totally connected. Um, it's being dosed, but we don't have any calc in there because we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And uh, there's actually an automatic float valve for auto top off, so we don't need to uh, set up a separate auto top off system. What else, did I miss anything? All right, let's take a look over here because here's where we have a lot of goodies. Like I said, been really laying the foundation for this tank for, for success and just so it hits the ground running. Um, all the cables have been made to disappear basically up in the back, which you can't see it, which you're not supposed to see it from any camera angle. Um, well, what's in here? We've got the, uh, the max spec controller here, which has wireless capability. Uh, we've got the power strip, the heater uh, thermostat, it's visible from the side. But really the coolest thing about this system so far is this four pack of John Len, uh, basically they're single channel dosing pumps. But they are so easy, so easy to dose and program. Um, so I've got these calibrated, um, and we've got calcium, magnesium, alkalinity, and just a little tiny bit of NOPOX. And one of the cool program settings on the John Len pump is you can uh, set it to dose a specific amount every one, two, three, up to nine day intervals. And it's just so easy to get there. So um, we've got top off taken care of. We've got the protein skimming filtration taken care of. We've got a little bit of, of, of um, phosphate absorbent media in those filter bags I forgot to mention and then temperatures on under control. So long story short, it's been about three weeks. We filled the tank with some uh, semi-cycled used dry rock from our good buddy, Rob Mouget. And uh, yeah, really, really excited to get this tank started. I've had just a couple frags in here um, as canaries in the coal mine, just to put them in there and just kind of test out the water. And uh, I am confident now that this tank is ready for a nice, double handful, more like a basket full. Actually more like three arm loads of corals we're gonna bring over here. And, uh, but we're gonna do that in a very special way. So let me show you that. Okay, so behind me, you can see the first running uh, coral table here at the Reef Builder Studio. And if you saw our first video, our previous video, um, you'll, we went through the entire equipment and kind of gave an overview of the different coral neighborhoods in here. But I wanna give you a preview of some of the corals that we're gonna put into this system. So this is one of the uh, orange money caps. 
that uh, Evan brought over. We're gonna put that in there. We've got a little bit of uh, plating, branching, green capitata. And what did you call this? I think it's Mystic Sunset, but I don't know what species it is. Mystic Sunset, so an encrusting Monty with some funky colored polyps. We've got a Palawanensis that's gonna go in there. Some kind of an Undata that I got from Unique Corals from Australia. Um, we've got two true Undatas that um, I think I'm only gonna put the big one in there because we don't need both of them in there. A red Foliosa, Jedi Mind Trick. We've got a bigger piece of um, Evan's uh, Capitata, Monopora Capitata. The green branching uh, cap, that's the Langsai cap. A couple random pieces over there. A uh, purple Digitata. And then there's a, uh, a variety of Digitata frags here on this frag rack that we're also gonna put in there. A bunch of varieties and hoping that once we get them together under some really, really good lighting, you'll be able to see the differences between a lot of these coral strains. So that's just a preview of the corals that we're gonna put over uh, in the Red Sea Peninsula tank. But before, we're not gonna put them directly in that tank. We're gonna bring them over here to the workshop we're gonna have uh, one guy basically taking a close look at the coral, protecting their eyes, scraping off any algae, picking at any possible piece of Valonia or Aptasia. And then they're gonna go over here in this dipping tank where we're gonna give them one last final dip before they make it over to their final home here in the uh, Red Sea Reefer Peninsula. So we are beyond excited. It's taken so much time for us to get set up to do this. And we've been talking about this for a few months and now it's go time and we're both totally, totally stoked. So without further ado, let's get it started. Let's do it.
Alrighty, so it's actually been about two weeks since uh, Evan and I got all the corals into the Red Sea Peninsula Reefer and it is looking so good, you guys. Um, the only reason I took some time uh, before showing you the tank is because I dosed a little bit extra Nopox and that's a carbon source that caused a bacterial bloom so the water was cloudy for almost 10 days. But today is the first day that the tank is really um, as clear as it should be. So here it is. Is, and you can see we've got a bunch of happy thriving corals basically we kind of organize all the corals into different neighborhoods kind of like we did with the coral flats so here in the center is kind of reserved for the Capricornus and the plating uh, corals we've got the Undata and the Paloanensis over here um, this is basically the monopora stick forest so these are all different colors of digitata with one different species right there in the back called uh, monopora samarensis and um, this is actually a thick branch. This is the uh, slime ball anacro, looking a little pale. I know I'm gonna talk about that. And this is a uh, shallow water anacropora that I collected uh, also in the Solomon Islands. Um, so yeah, man, the tank is dialed in. We're going in at about five weeks so far. I gave it a light scrub right now on the glass, but it was just the lightest, really light dusting of uh, biofilm and um, very little algae. So. Um, so yeah, really enjoying this tank so far. Let me give you a, a look from the other side. And we're, uh, you know, starting to develop that double-sided peninsula view that we all love. So one big addition that I really ought to talk about is this ginormous Satosa here that I got my from my friend Luis Rosa. When he told me that he had a colony of Satosa for me, um, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be a frag, but I didn't realize this thing would be almost too big for a bucket. So um, really, really love this coral here. It's got that beautiful uh, neon orange coloration. It grows really fast, but I do think I might eventually replace that colony with that rock, so take that rock out and put that colony there, just so that its branching form can kind of blend in with all the other digitatas. But um, a really, really great addition, and we're gonna be following up with Luis and uh, his tank and a coral that I gave him very soon. There's a little bit less to see on this side, but uh, you know, just kind of want to take it slow as far as introducing corals. Um, this is a Jason Fox slow burn. We've got the crazy tea, Kepitata, and uh, you can see that big orange foliosa that we worked on. Sorry, that's the, actually the orange cap. And this is the red foliosa. Here we've got uh, the Jedi mind trick, and you can see uh, the other side of the uh, monopora stick forest from this side. And uh, still have a lot of open areas here. This is gonna be reserved for encrusting monoporas. And uh, yeah, there's still a ton of room, a ton of room in this tank. But um, now that I've got it started and uh, all the levels are doing really good, um, we're excited to actually call up a bunch of my reefer friends and ask them for a bunch of classic monoporas. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the chemistry. So in the first part of this video, I showed you these individual John Len dosing pumps. So each one is a doser and a channel. And um, in the meantime, I've actually been able to dial in uh, their flow rates, their dosing rates. And let's see, we're up to 45 ml of calcium every single day, uh, 60 ml of magnesium every day, um, 40 mLs of buffer every day. And um, since I had that little uh, bi bacterial bloom and the tank is super duper clean, um, the Nopox has actually gone offline um, or I've turned it off. So uh, the calc reactor is now running, um, but I did have to dose this tank manually uh, some magnesium because uh, if you don't know, monopores love, love, love magnesium. So I probably had to dose about two liters of concentrated magnesium to finally, finally get the level um, to a place that I want. So, um, actually did the test today, and we're getting close to uh, Red Sea's recipe uh, for their reef care program. So the bottom levels here are for the Red Sea tank. So we got 462 calcium, 10 dKH alkalinity, and 1550 on the magnesium. And I know that's a little bit high, and I don't like to ride my levels uh, super high, but it's, uh, those, those monopores are gonna catch up very, very soon, so I'm not worried about it. So um, I guess in addition to that, I am just dosing, uh, let's see, some iodide, potassium, iron, and their trace element additive uh, manually. Not every, every single day, but about as often as, as I remember, so every few days. 
So I'm um, really enjoying this tank. We've got happy, healthy corals. Um, the color is definitely on the pastel side, so we definitely have some room for improvement there, but I really think that it's just a uh, low nutrient uh, situation. So I have been feeding the fish pretty generously and just now starting to uh, uh, feed actually some coral food. But uh, all in all, man, this is really not bad for a tank that's just going on five weeks old and corals inside of it for just uh, two weeks. I appreciate everybody's patience in uh, getting this video out. Um, been really busy with reef stock. As you see, I got my reef stock swag on today, so make sure to go to reef stock that uh, show for all the information about the first big reef event uh, happening here in Denver. And uh, yeah, thanks you guys for tuning in. We're gonna be revisiting this tank quite a bit, especially when I get more of pores in there when I get the, the, the colors dialed in and uh, this is just the first of many great display reef aquariums we're going to be showing off here at the Reef Builder Studio. So if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you loved it. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.